How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Mojo Grip Mike here. Today I've got another special airplane for you. Behind me is a Lancer 4P. You guys remember we checked out the little little brother for this airplane very recently this year and today we're going to check out the four seater for the Lancer. Stay tuned. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Many of you know me as a pilot and a YouTuber, but I also run several businesses and sometimes it's just hard to focus. So a masterclass like the one taught by Ali Abdal on Skillshare is the perfect class for me. Ali is also a YouTuber and a doctor and this is what I love about Skillshare. The person teaching the class is relatable and although they're experts in their fields, he breaks these classes down in such simple terms that even I can understand. And these are examples of productivity classes that you will find on Skillshare. Right now, Skillshare is giving away two months absolutely free for the premium membership. This is to the first thousand people who click on the link in the description box below. Try it out for two months and explore your creativity. After that, it's only $10 a month. The Lancer 4P and guys, today I'm actually at an air park. This is the dream right here if you are a pilot. All right, you basically pull your plane out, you taxi out into the taxiway right behind your home. Your hangar is pretty much attached uh, to your home here. And we're gonna meet the owner of this airplane soon, but first, I wanna give you a good review of this monster right here. If you're familiar with Lancers, you know that these birds are built for one thing, and that is to go fast, really fast. And this, this bad boy right here can go very fast and this is the type of plane you get into if you are looking to get a cross-country airplane or if you just want to get to places much faster now the pricing on this thing I'll talk about that later but I want to give you a brief history while I walk around it so if you're familiar with Lancers these are some of the earliest earliest models when it comes to experimental airplanes and Lancers they've been building these particular uh, design for years. As a matter of fact, this body frame right here, if you look at it, and let me step back a little bit, you can probably find something else in the market that's very similar. If you think of the Columbia 300, 400, um, the, even the Cirrus looks similar to this. And then you think of the Cessna TTX, which Cessna stopped making uh, a few years ago. Those designs were borrowed from this, from this Lancer 4P. And Lancer was the first to design these, and then Columbia bought them. And at the time, this here is a retractable landing gear. But the earliest models for these were fixed landing gears. And so Columbia bought it from Lancer, and then Cessna picked them up and then turned them into a certified plane. And this outlived all of them. Because the Columbia 300s, they're still flying, but the company doesn't exist anymore. But you will still find a lot of these Lancer 4P. And the P, by the way, stands for pressurized. So the airplane you're looking at in front of me is fully loaded. Pressurized, air conditioned. The, the avionics panel is off the chain. And I'll show you everything once we step inside. And also, if you look at the wing here, and speaking of the wing, let me back up a little bit. You can see the length of this wing compared to actually in the same hangar here, you've got a Lancet 360 back there, which I'll review in a little bit for you guys. But if you look at the size and the length of those wings compared to this, you see that this is much longer. And this also gives you a more stable platform compared to that fighter right there okay i call it a fighter because that thing is very sporty and it's a bit more sensitive uh, compared to this plane this is a heavier airplane um, and speaking of those wings you see here this tape looking thing here that you see this is heat thermal and this is for your icing and uh, if you're familiar with fiki flight into known icing this helps you out and I just got educated, believe it or not, on this system because I thought you needed some type of liquid mixture to have your uh, de-icing equipment work, but this is all electric. So this heats up and melts out your icing for you. So that's something new I learned today. And then if we come up front, 
This is where all the magic happens. A twin turbo IO550. That's the general, or I would say the standard engine for the Lancia 4. Um, and this thing really makes this airplane go. You look at the prop here. Now it is an experimental, so obviously you can always interchange your power plan, but most builders who build these planes, they go for the same IO550. Um, and you see it's a three-bladed prop, okay? Now, one of the best parts of this airplane, and let me actually get closer to them because I think the design is very important uh, for these planes. You see the nose gear here? This is the housing for that. So that opens up, and once these open up, let me show you the ones for the other two in the back here. Just show you how neat this thing is. And you can tell how much time the original builder put into this plane. So initially when you see this right now, you would not even think that this is a retractable landing gear, but the housing for this is right here. So you see the housing here. And so these gears come backwards just as the nose gear does such a neat design and again once they come up you have less drag and the airplane just pulls and just as the gears retract this step up also retract <laughs> so you can tell there's a lot of details that went into the design of this airplane and this is the first this is the first that I've ever seen if you see this opening or this housing here let me get the camera to it See that L shape cut there? This thing goes in there. So once this airplane is off the ground, you will have as little drag as, as possible. And believe it or not, even though this is a four seater, it goes even faster than that one. And that one is a speed machine. So, and that's because they saved a lot of space in reducing drag on this plane. And again, Lancers, as you know, are built for speed. Really nothing else, just go fast. And something neat, actually, while I'm still back here, you've got the luggage, and you can open the luggage from this button right here. Simply click on that. When I push it, watch what happens. And there you have access to your baggage compartment. Very nice, just simple touches. And again, you don't necessarily get these in certified airplanes, but you get them in a Lancia 4P. So while I'm here, let's get into the interior. Guys, you know I'm very big on interior space because this is where the pilot is gonna spend most of their time. And I've seen so many airplanes built well, they look great on the outside, but when you get inside, it just, it looks, it looks like a village in there, but you can see just the workmanship in this interior space. So those avionics I was talking to you about, you see this is a full glass panel, all right? This may be a panel that you're already familiar with. That's the Garmin G3X Touch. You've got the GTN 750 and autopilot there. And what you see that's different, so guys, you know, with my plane, I have a 650, and the screen is pretty much half the size of this. Uh, so you've got all glass here. So you've got the 750, and then you've got the autopilot, and then you've got a Dynon for your EFIS there. And one cool feature in this plane, let me step in. Look, if you can read that. That's an air conditioner. Yeah. So you've got air condition in this plane. This is also rare, guys. Most single engine airplanes, it's just something, it's such a luxury that you don't have in single engine airplanes. And with this bird, you've got air condition, okay? You've got your circuit breakers there. And the middle console here is where you've got your throttle, your uh, prop lever, and then you've got your mixture. So as I was saying, I love how the simplicity of this panel here. You've got very uh, little buttons. Um, you've got your G3X Touch. You know G3X Touch is a touch screen. So that may be why you don't really need a lot of buttons. Uh, but you see how neat this setup is. You've got 
one here, your primary, your secondary display. Again, you've got the 750 in the middle, which is a huge screen. So even a blind man can fly and see everything through this here. You've got your autopilot here and then your EFIS. Uh, something cool that I was just shown. So if you move this to video, you can see that. So say for example, you're in flight and you need to make sure that your freaking gears are up or down. Although you have the gear lever here, this will tell you, uh, will indicate to you if the gears are up or down. But this is another way to confirm that, which is very neat. Um, so you've got a sort of redundant system here, but let's talk about this cabin. And I'm gonna turn the camera around because I'm sweating in here. Here we are, guys. Don't mind my sweat, it's hot as hell out here. So one of the flaws or one of the things you may hear about Lanterns is that they, they're very tight space, at least compared to some of the competition. When you think of the Cirrus, which to me is the bread and butter of planes in this class, okay? Planes that can go this fast, although this plane to me goes significantly faster than a Cirrus. But with the Cirrus, you've got a good 50 inches across for the cabin width. In here though, you've got about 44, 43, 44. But nobody is sitting next to me right now, so I can't really compare. But I will say, sitting in here uh, on the pilot seat, very comfortable. And, and I don't know if you can tell, the seats, they actually push back a little bit. So I've got a lot of leg room. So here's my leg room here. I've got a ton of it. And as a matter of fact, if I was flying this airplane right now, I would need to push my seat forward. So depending on your size, you should be able to fit in here just fine. Now, this airplane can carry up to four people. Although, I don't know how tight it may be in here depending on the size of each individual. So, but you have the room for four people. And while I'm here, another cool aspect of this plane is that you have side sticks. Normally, the, the two-seater Lancer, for example, has the middle stick, which would be right here. But this is a side stick, and part of it also is to save the real estate space in here. So you've got one and two in there and you may not fancy the wood much so this is gonna be based on personal preference I prefer the just the black um, but also this airplane is a 2004 model um, so this whoever built this obviously they, they preferred the wood but it goes perfectly with the with the uh, color in here as you can see I'm not even sure what this color is. It's like brownish orange, but it's very neat. And also sitting in this seat, uh, they're very comfortable. And as a matter of fact, let me show you the back seat. So you look in the back here. Again, the seats up front are pushed almost to the end here. So you've got very little leg room there. But once you move those seats or these front seats forward, you will have some leg room, a better leg room. But you can see here, it's all the way, there's no room behind that. Uh, to put some baggage in this plane, you'd have to do that from the outside. Again, this airplane is equipped to air condition, so you, you have that, and this airplane is pressurized. For your AC, you've got all the vents, you've got some up top of the roof, you've got behind for your passengers, you've got some up top here also. Um, so you, you've, Whoever designed this thing and whoever built it, they did a pretty good job and they, they, they loaded it up pretty good. Now guys, we're back out here and one of the things I forgot to mention actually is the paint job on this airplane. You look at it, you've got black, you've got some gray, and then you've got red or maroon color. And guys, you know I'm a big fan of anyone who will go outside the norm of painting the airplane just pure white. And some stripes so I thought they did a really neat job with this plane here and again something to me that's significant with this airplane is the wing when you look at the wing on this plane and then you look at the wing on the two-seater you can tell the difference and also you've got the winglets here which is pretty neat and just to show you how fast this thing goes look what you've got here these are speed brakes Okay, when you're coming in, you may need those to slow you down. And so these do a good job in slowing down the airplane. Now, your normal approach speed on final, you're doing about 100 knots in this plane. Now, someone like me, 
that's fast you know I'm used to 60 to 75 tops uh, so you better be able to handle a plane like this now speaking of that speed this airplane will cruise at 250 knots okay at 15,000 feet you're going 250 knots if you just try to imagine how fast that is that's turboprop territory so normally if you're flying a turboprop you expect speeds like that uh, as a matter of fact an airplane that comes to mind is the m600 that costs maybe four or five six times more than this airplane uh, but you can go just as fast in a lancer 4p and so if you can handle that kind of speed perhaps this is the airplane for you now in terms of price this is an experimental plane so you could always get a kit and build one but more than likely this airplane you would have to buy it used and you would hope that whoever you're buying it from did a great job in building it um, for a normal Lancer 4 that's not pressurized you can find those 300,000 maybe 400 for these I can't even really put a price tag on this because it's got everything glass panel you've got AC you've got pressurization the whole nine yards now if you're looking for something like this you're probably looking at half a million dollars and up and it depends obviously on the quality of the build it depends on the time on the engine and a whole lot of other features but if you find a great deal you may be able to find this five hundred six hundred thousand dollars and it's it's worth it in terms of what you get for the money because again you're comparing this airplane to the Cirrus SR22 the Cessna TTX but guess what this is still the fastest of them all you can't beat the speed uh, of this airplane but I hope you guys enjoy this one. Let me know if you have any questions in the link uh, in the description below. Uh, and also, if you have any questions, I'm going to be interviewing the owner. Uh, if you guys have any questions for him, uh, we're going to find out what it costs to own this thing, to maintain an insurance, and so on and so forth. I also forgot to mention, normally at 250 knots, you burn about 18 gallons of fuel per hour. So you can do the math there, but you're also getting to where you're going faster. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give a thumbs up. And if this is your first time, make sure you subscribe to the Mojo Group channel. And guys, a great way to support the channel is by becoming a member. Either become a premium member here on YouTube or head on to mojogroup.net forward slash MVP. And I will catch you on the next one. It's not a game. It's a